So, uh, over in high school, uh, after school club, I was in ROTC, J-R-O-T-C, anybody else? J-R-O-T-C? The little army program for the, you know, army wannabes in high school. So I was in the armed drill team after school, and basically what that meant was from Monday through Friday, after school, in this black top parking lot behind Overton High School, I, along with a majority of a group of boys, would be uh, drilling and you lugging around these 10-pound uh, rifles and flipping them and doing all types of tricks and, and that was what we did Monday through Friday after school in the blacktop behind Overton uh, High School. And even though it wasn't like a girly girl club, there were a lot of cute guys on the team so I had to try to, you know, be cute when I came to the club and when I came to practice. But I wasn't prepared for y'all's Memphis heat out here. It's, it's ridiculous. So there were days where it was so hot, the sweat would be pouring down my body, and in my white polo shirt, there'd be these big old nasty sweat stains. And uh, on the real hot days, I had my perm did and sweat it all out and sweat it all out. And the deodorant underneath my arms just disintegrated. It's, it's not even there anymore. So, uh, um, on those days, I just kind of like silently in my mind just resigned to cut trying to be cute out. I just gave, I gave up trying to be pretty, you know? I wasn't going to be, uh, you know, praised for my girliness, and I wasn't going to be, you know, the first choice for beauty queen. I just gave it up. Anybody else ever felt like that before? So anyways, one year, let's fast forward one year to my sophomore year, it's another day on the, the black top parking lot, the, the hot, the heat wave parking lot after school. And um, Alex, one of my friends uh, at Overton, he comes back from one of those behind the portable classroom. Yeah, I remember the portable classrooms, we still got them. But anyways, he comes back from behind there and he leans back on his beat up Ford truck. And from afar, he watches us at, the, uh, at our practice. He watches us practice. Now, it's hot outside, and I got this rifle on my shoulder, and if I could, I would be going home by now. And so I was just amazed that this, this guy was standing off in this heat, just sitting off and watching us practice. So every now and then, throughout the practice, I'm doing my drills and stuff. I'm just cutting my corner, my eye over in the corner to see if he's still over there. And he is. I keep doing my thing. We you know, flipping some stuff and <laughs> cut my eye over in the corner. And he's still there waiting on God knows what. And so by the end of practice was over, he, was, he hadn't melted yet, so I had to figure out what is this guy sitting over here in this heat waiting for? And so I go up to him and I say, Alex, hey man, what's going on? Are, are you waiting for something? And he looks over and he catches me by much surprise and he says, yeah, I'm waiting for you. You waiting for me? Just sweat and stank was covering me. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to uh, ask you if you want to come to the movies with me this weekend. You waited out here <laughs> in this heat to ask me to the movies? Boy, y'all want to talk about somebody with a puffed out chest in the day? You couldn't tell me I want the team out of the team. I was like, oh, yeah, I got it going on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Good. And we love those moments, don't we, ladies? When somebody stops and notices, man, girl, you got it going on. And we can easily chase down those moments all the days of our lives because the cry of a woman's heart is, am I beautiful? Am I loved? But so often, our experiences, people, and circumstances get right up in our faces and they say, there's nothing special about you. Who would love you? Perhaps when you came in tonight, you thought there's not a whole lot of evidence that you can point to that says, I'm an adored woman. Maybe experience spoke those harsh words over you, those words that you aren't beautiful, who could love you? Maybe you heard those words when you grew up without the love and affirmation of your father. 
Maybe you experienced that when you try so hard to reconcile with someone, but they never notice your efforts. Or maybe you experienced that when you invested your time, your resources, your affections, and your body into a relationship with a God, only to have him leave you as if nothing sacred or intimate had ever happened between the two of you. What if maybe every time you try to believe that you're more than mistakes you've made, the loneliness you felt, the rejection you've experienced, or the abuse you've received, maybe every time you try to believe that you're more than that, that you are adored, those experiences, those people, those circumstances, they get right up to you and they get right in your face and they say, sit down and learn your place. Well, I hate bullies. Anybody else hate bullies? Tonight, adored women, we're going to turn the tables on our less than and left out experiences. And we're going to say, experiences, I'd like to introduce you to the Word of God. Amen. Come on. Repeat me. after me. Experiences, I'd like to introduce you to the Word of God. And I don't think there's anybody more qualified in the Bible to teach us this lesson than Leah. So we're going to go to Genesis 29, verse 16. It says, Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel. He said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It's better than I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Have you ever felt like God was doing great things for everybody but you? <laughs> Leah is introduced in the middle of somebody else's happy occasion, an engagement between Jacob and her younger sister, Rachel. And now, I don't know why Moses did this. He writes the book of Genesis. I don't know why he did this. But when he introduces Leah, he doesn't do it like we normally do. You know, when you introduce your friend, like, uh, I just introduced Nicole. Nicole is so pretty and she's so kind. You know, she's a great friend, very loyal. He didn't do that. He pulls up Leah in the scriptures and he says, look, this is Leah. She has weak eyes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Moses. Dang it. Excuse me. So he introduces Leah by her most observable flaw. <clears throat> and the scripture isn't really clear about what having weak eyes meant. I mean, some Bible scholars say it had something to do with her eye color. People liked dark eyes back then, but she had light eyes, so we Leah had weak eyes. And another Bible scholar says, oh, she had an affection in her eyes. Maybe Leah had pink eye. <laughs> Who knows? All I'm, the, I'm glad, but I'm glad they don't tell us what we guys meant. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I know that Leah knows how it feels to look in the mirror and ask herself, man, I wonder if my butt is big enough. Is my waist small enough? Is my hair long enough? And what about my height? Am I too tall? Am I not short enough? Or is my skin not light enough? Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Leah was an ugly girl. So, so Jacob went into Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and served Laban for another seven years. Have you ever given everything, the best of you, to someone else? Only to have them tell you, it's not good enough. Leah gives the best of herself. After she gets married, after she's married, it's over culturally. She, she can't get another relationship like that, even if she got divorced. She's ruined. But she gives all of herself to him. And she gives him her love and her devotion. No, the circumstances were not ideal, but that's what she did. She gave her love and her devotion. But that wasn't enough to stop Jacob from pursuing Rachel as well. So Jacob went into Rachel also, 
he loved Rachel more than he loved Leah. Leah was an unloved girl. So now, I bet you guys are probably asking yourselves, how is this ugly, used, and unloved woman going to teach us three ways to live like treasure when we feel discarded and forgotten? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're thinking about it. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so we're getting ready to find, we're going to glean three habits as we walk through three events in Leah's life. And what I want y'all to do for me as we walk through these three events, I want you to pay close attention to the character in each event and pay attention to where their focus is. Where are they looking? What are they looking at? Can y'all do that for me? Yeah. All right, that's what I'm talking about.